Samsung launches new phones and they finally want to put a ring on it. Microsoft and Apple have to leave ChatGPT and the RTX 5090 goes super speed. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, July 11th, 2024, 7-Eleven Day, Kyler. 7-Eleven. Let's get some Slurpees. Although I know that a lot of our international viewers like to complain about our date format when we talk about that. So they're going to say it's actually 11 seven day for us. So uh, <laughs> what they talking. you must be fun at parties. All right. And you know what else is fun? Samsung's party is specifically their Unpack 2024 event because they got new stuff to show off like a new folding phone and another new folding phone and a new watch and another new watch. And then a ring for you to put on your finger. The Samsung ring is finally here. And it looks like it's essentially everything a smartwatch does, but in a smaller, less desirable form factor that could potentially deglove you. It's a wild time, 400 bucks, detects your heart rate, gives you a notification if you're not moving enough. And you can even take pictures with your Galaxy phone. That's kind of one of the most exciting things out of the Samsung Unpacked event, as well as the fact that they now have an watch ultra as well as a new watch seven they seem to be decent enhancements as well as changes in form factor and then they have the fold six and the flip six which are the book open and flap open smartphones that fold and they are just like minor upgrades better camera to now have G galaxy ai that's worth anything to you and just appear to be the new iteration so let me know if you're picking up any of that down below because you will probably have more money in your wallet if you're a Microsoft Game Pass subscriber because you're likely gonna unsubscribe now due to the fact that they have raised their prices on most of the tiers and changed the conditions by which you can access games. So this is something that just took over the internet. People are not happy with Microsoft right now with them changing not only the pricing, but also the day one eligibility perk for various games. That will now be exclusive to the Game Pass Ultimate tier, which is getting an increase in its price from $16.99 to 20 bones a month. Game Pass PC is getting a two bone increase and then Game Game Pass Core is going from a $60 annual subscription to $75 annual subscription, even though it stays at $10 a month in case you want it monthly. But then again, as I mentioned, they are removing the ability for you to get games day one. It appears like their idea that games should be subscriptions and that people would pay more and they would get more revenue somehow if people didn't have to buy the games isn't panning out. It was kind of farcical to begin with. like. I subscribe to Game Pass because at $20 a month, you know, you tabulate that, that's $240 a year. That's like me buying about four AAA games a year, which it's kind of what I average. So now it's kind of getting to the point where I, it actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to keep Game Pass because it's now outpacing the price of which I had value from it when it was cheaper, when it was like, oh, it's the value of two AAA games. Well, now it makes a lot of sense and I can play whatever I want. Let me know what you're going to be doing with Game Pass. And while Microsoft is removing value, NVIDIA deciding to add some value to you, especially in partnership with OBS, announcing that the OBS 30.2 release candidate one is now compatible with Twitch enhanced broadcasting, which is available on all GeForce cards, 900 series and up. Yeah, that decade old 970 you got sitting in your system, that can now support Twitch enhanced broadcasting, which is making it easier for you to have multiple encodes going out to various different sources. This is going in line with the fact that Twitch made it easier for you to do multiple streams to different places. It's no longer against TOS to stream to YouTube and Twitch at the same time. So this helps to alleviate that and put those concurrent streams on a single GPU instead of making it so that you have to have it divvied up by CPU and otherwise. So it's a good little enhancement. NVIDIA giving it to people who don't deserve it anymore. If you're on the 900 series, I'm shocked that you're still getting support. That Those drivers should be ending someday soon. Like, I wouldn't be terribly surprised if we lost driver support this year for any of the 900 series. So uh, count your blessings and count your Reese's because I think there's only one, but sometimes who knows? There might be little clones. 
You gotta, you gotta capture them. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well. And hey, look at that, some deals right there. Starting off today, we have the Team Group T4's Vulcan DDR5 kit, featuring 32 gigs of RAM at 6,000 megahertz with a timing of CL30. You can pick this up for only $89.99, making it $13 off. But then next up, we have the Logitech G Pro X wireless gaming headset, going for only $119.99, making it $110 off. And then lastly, we have this KTC 27 inch 1440p 180 hertz IPS gaming monitor for only $159.99 with the coupon applied making it $40 off. And hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well Reese the deal of the century between Apple and OpenAI when it came to getting a board seat for paying zero dollars even though Microsoft had to pay 10 billy doesn't turn out to matter all that much because both Microsoft and Apple have to leave their board observer seat that they had at OpenAI because of regulatory issues because the EU and the US are looking into all these AI startups and seeing if there's antitrust violations, if there's things that are going on that maybe shouldn't. And so Microsoft has to give up their seat. They invested $10 billion into OpenAI, hold a very large share percentage of that company. Apple said, hey, ChatGPT, We'll let you involved in our ecosystem for free if you also talk about us for free and then you give us a desktop app. And so they just work for each other for exposure. So good deal for Apple, but now they don't get a board seat, which it was supposed to be Phil Schiller who was supposed to join the Apple board observer seat over at OpenAI. And that is no longer going to happen. So Apple didn't lose, Microsoft did fantastic stuff and we all lose with intel's new naming scheme i'm going to continue to harp on this for as long as intel continues to name their cpus this poorly the ultra 200k lineup now being revealed by cpu z the program showing off what we should be expecting out of the error lake desktop chips as well as the lunar lake chips and it's nonsense core ultra 9 285k and 275k as well as the core ultra 7 265k and 255 and the core ultra 5 245k and 240 there's no core ultra 3 for error lake they're not going that low end at least initially and all the reports that i've seen is that it's not going to be based on the Arrow Lake architecture. It's actually gonna be based on Raptor Lake, but regardless, terrible naming scheme. Intel, you drop the most iconic part of your branding. Please change it back. Don't move forward with this. You can you can pivot. You can reverse bad decisions. It's a thing you can do. I don't like this. Am I the only one? Am I just a man yelling at a cloud right now? Regardless, the Lunar Lake versions are actually also going to be Core Ultra 200, but they're gonna have a V at the end, which stands for Vendetta. So they got Core Ultra 9 285, 82, Core Ultra 9 288 Vendetta, Ultra 7 268 Vendetta, 266 Vendetta, 258 Vendetta, 256 Vendetta, Ultra this bit's done ultra 5 236 228 226 v great these are all going to be fantastic easy to remember names i love this this is this is the future that i want to be in we don't know much about core count on the desktop chips we have a general idea of what we're expecting like the ultra 9285k potentially have 24 cores 24 threads but it's not quite clear if they're going to be dropping hyper threading on the desktop chips just yet but we're expected to have these launch sometime in q4 i believe so we'll wait for details on that and we got more details coming out on AMD's 9000 series. I told you I'll keep you updated as all of these new 9000 series benchmarks are coming out. And the 9950X has finally hit the scene. The 16 core chip getting its Geekbench run, showing that it's just slightly slower than the 9900X 12 core chip that was benchmarked earlier this week. Now, this is likely due to the fact that the 9900X might have had PBO enabled, which is precision boost overdrive, AMD's auto overclocking feature or it could have been that there was a hidden setting somewhere that was enabled that made it faster or they did something peculiar with it but the 9950x despite the fact that it has a technical higher clock speed than the 9900x is coming in at a slower single core score and then its multi-core score actually isn't that much higher than the 9900x and it is slightly less than the 14900k so if you want the best multi-threaded Geekbench score, you're going for that. Looks like Intel might still remain top dog. And Nvidia is dogging everybody with the clock speed on the RTX 5090. We got a well known leaker over on a forum revealing that the RTX 5090 is going to kerchew straight to the speed of 2.9 gigahertz at base frequency, which 
begs the question, how far is that thing gonna boost? Probably very high. We're expecting the 5090 to have 28 gigabytes of GDDR7 coming in at 1.5 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth, and then that base clock of 2.9 gigahertz, potentially with a boost somewhere in the neighborhood of like 3.1, 3.2, maybe even 3.3. .3. Definitely expecting to be a very fast card. We're not sure if it's gonna be two slots or four slots. There's been conflicting rumors on how big this GPU is gonna be. I wouldn't expect it to be smaller than four slots, but the prevailing rumor is that it is going to be smaller. But with the base clock being so fast, I just remember back to when the three gigahertz barrier was crossed on a GPU for the first time by South Africans. That's right, the GTX 1060 broke the three gigahertz barrier with a South African overclocker known as Vivi. This guy right here, he passed the barrier and uh, made it so that now Nvidia can run because he walked. That's that's how this works. So shout out Vivi, shout out Dr. Wee's well-known South African extreme overclockers. Proud of you. Thanks for uh, blazing the trail for us to be where we are today. But I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go back to yesterday and read your comments from hot news. Over on Floatplane, we got Scarfo saying, wait, isn't using AI to build AI how the Matrix or Terminator movies began? I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. The Terminator, well, like Skynet, like runaway AI is, I guess the fear, right? The singularity, that's the whole thing. But didn't the Matrix start with battery babies? And was that AI's fault? I thought, th I don't know. I can't remember. And we got Northern Llama saying insane game storage requirements are the new can it run crisis benchmark. No, no, they're not. I disagree with you. And then on the previous episode of Hot News, the one from Tuesday, uh, we had PX4 saying, you mentioned there's a lot of stuff that gets left on the cutting room floor. So can we get a cutting room floor montage float plane exclusive? As I mentioned in yesterday's episode of Hot News, there's no need for that because we live stream our day over on Twitch. We had a bunch of new people show up in the Twitch stream yesterday, which was great to have new, new little typefaces around talking to us throughout the day. So in case you want to see Hot News being filmed live, it is on Twitch most days. It's I, I have people staring at me right now, commenting horrible things to me. Cam, stop saying that. That is naughty of you. I'm, I'm not even going to repeat what you said for the camera. Shame on you. And then over on YouTube, we got Rogue saying, you mean it won't take me all night to download a game anymore? AMD are my heroes. It's not gonna change much. A anytime AMD invents a new feature, we can get all excited about it, but game devs, they don't use AMD stuff. Like they go with Nvidia, it's just easier to implement. They Nvidia gives them the hardware. I, we can hope, we can hope AMD's making things better, but who knows. Then Mod saying, we don't need AI, we need a better hardware. Well, that's what, so AI is coming with better hardware. You got the new NPUs with 45 tops. They, they're they're faster. I mean, GPUs also run AI software. I just, I keep getting frustrated with all of these AI PC things because Nvidia already made GPUs that can run AI stuff very effectively, very power efficiently. The tensor cores are basically as power efficient as an NPU, even if the, you know, CUDA cores aren't. And it just, it's all marketing. It's it's that's the frustration that I have with all of it. Then Mr. Dill Doc saying, would Reese still wear a scarf in Death Valley this week? Yes. Oh, he absolutely would. You know, that man, when we went to Taiwan, it's it's 95, 98 degrees outside, tons of humidity. He will ask every single time we're inside, hey guys, you think I should bring a hoodie? You think it's cold outside? That man has no good perception of temperature. I, I don't know how he survived this long. And I don't survive this episode of Hot News. I'm dead now, sorry.